Hey everyone, wanted to take a minute today to discuss picking your market or what markets or what dynamics or metrics you want to look for in a market that is something you want to invest in. I got a couple questions from viewers about this, so I wanted to take a quick minute and touch on some basics of it. Again, I don't know everything about markets and there's different ways to invest in real estate. I will simply tell you what I look for in markets and the metrics I use to determine if I want to go in a market or not. Now, when picking a market in real estate, you want to look for, you know, I, look, I invest for cash flow. Cash flow real estates at a decently high leverage beginning off, you know, 80, 90, sometimes even 100% leverage. That alone eliminates a lot of your markets in the United States. Okay, it simply does. If you're in downtown Manhattan and trying to do what I do and get seller financing and no money down deals, you are not gonna be able to do it. Okay, you simply aren't. If I try to do it here where I live now in Colorado, I've looked at some real estate deals. Even if I put 20% down, it usually doesn't even break it even. Okay, there's some lesser areas of town where it might break even or maybe cash flow very minimally, not enough to cover maintenance. But generally, as you get closer to the coast in the country, this process or the way I invest in real estate eliminates itself. The real estate is valued too high. Colorado is another good example. It's valued too high. The metrics I use work very, very well in smaller towns in located in the center of the country the breadbasket states, the Rust Belt states, et cetera, et cetera. So that just eliminates a lot of markets for me. I can't, in, in my state where I invest in Wisconsin, I invested in Madison right away. In Madison, which has seen great appreciation and prices have risen um, for different reasons around there, great university, great company called Epic, down in Verona, Wisconsin, has caused the whole market to swell and to go up in value. You can't invest in that area, in a, a good area in Madison, and put even 20% down, and you'll probably break even. You won't cash flow, but you probably would break even. That's where that market's at. So it's too expensive. I would love to invest there, but it doesn't fit my, my metrics, so I don't. Other big market in Wisconsin is Milwaukee. Milwaukee has come across my plate several times and it does have the metrics I look for. However, Milwaukee is a bigger place. There are some areas where I don't want to invest in Milwaukee. I don't know where those are necessarily, so I don't invest there because I don't know the market as well. But Milwaukee is an example of a bigger town where you can do this. Uh, another example that I know people have done very, very well is Indianapolis, Indiana. You can do what I'm talking about there, cash flowing for high leverage and do very, very well. Ohio has cities all over that you can do this in. Uh, Michigan, even Minnesota, as long as you're not trying to invest in uptown in Minneapolis where prices are astronomical, you can still do this. But it's when you get to cities like Chicago, downtown, Seattle, Denver, LA, Bigger towns, even just near the coast, you can't do that. The prices are just too high to invest for cash flow. So they invest for other things like development opportunities, appreciation, et cetera, et cetera. I don't do that. I just, those markets are just off my radar because they're too expensive. So what I look for, and I like to really hone in, are towns between about 50,000 and 100,000. The reason I don't go below that and I'll caveat this with many people invest in smaller towns and they do very, very well. However, I like 50,000 or above because that generally means there's a stable economy. There's some stable employers, big employers there, keeping the town generally stable and I know it's gonna have some longevity. Whereas if you go into a town that has 5,000 people, yet there's an employer that employs 500 of them, so 10% of the town. If that employer goes out of business, you're in trouble. You're going to have tenants not paying and have a tough time filling as you watch people exit the town. So if you get into a bigger town, you'll have more of those employers, so your risk is spread out. So if one employer does go out of business, you still have others to pick up the slack, etc. 
room to expand, more employers are coming to town, you get the picture. I like looking for stable types of employers. Great one that I love to invest by is universities. Universities employ lots of people. They bring other people to the area, the students, and it's government funded on both sides usually, right? The school receives government funding and that's pretty stable. The students also receive government funding and student loans and financial aid. So they can help pay the rent, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of money coming through there that just plays into your favor. Another great employer to invest by is healthcare. Hospitals are pretty stable. If you're in a sizable town, that hospital, the community needs it, right? If it's the only player. If there's multiple players, well, there's, you know, one could beat out the other. But if you're in a town with one hospital and that goes out, well, then there's a lack of access to healthcare and the community will need to fix that. So another one will come in or they'll just help the failing hospital out so they cannot fail, they have to stay. So I like those two the best, healthcare and education. If you invest by those, I think they're pretty stable. You know, otherwise look for, if you have a lot of factories or corporate headquarters, look for stable industries to invest by to mitigate your risk that, you know, a downturn in the economy will mean a downturn for your portfolio, if that makes any sense. Now I mentioned I don't go below 50,000 people is kind of my, my metric I came up with. I have lots of friends, guys, that invest in towns of three, five, 10,000 people and do amazing. As you go down in the size of the town you invest in, your cash flow should go up because your perceived risk or let's call it actual risk goes up. I say perceived risk because if you're from that town and you know the market, you know where you want to invest in, what area of the town, the, you have your finger on the pulse of what's going on, the employers, et cetera, et cetera, you know people around the town, that risk goes down and becomes more of a perceived risk for an, for an investor. So if it's a bigger investor looking at the small town, they're like, oh man, that's risky. I don't know that town. And you know, if that employer goes out, I'm in trouble. Whereas if you're from that town, you know what's going on, that risk is very much mitigated. You can do very, very well. And because of that perceived risk, the cash flow should be higher. So I'm not saying don't do that. If you're in a town like that, I would very much encourage you to invest there. Um, other things that I look for, I guess, are strong market trends as far as which way the economy is trending in the town. You know, you don't want a dying town that's very blue collar factory in the last couple of decades. Now that's maybe starting to come back a little bit. However, blue collar, you know, the factory jobs were tending to go overseas. So if you could move into more of a white collar corporate office uh, market, that would be much more desirable. Again, I, I don't like the the towns that are ride or die, right? Like healthcare and educations do not do much in an economy. Even a boom economy, they don't make a whole bunch more money. In a bust economy, they don't make a whole bunch more money. Towns that, a great example of a town that is a ride or die town is Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada, in the last 10 years, I think is one of the top markets to have invested in real estate. Austin, Texas is up there, even Seattle is up there, but I'm pretty sure that Las Vegas, Nevada, if you invested 10 years ago, you would have saw the best return on appreciation on your investment. Well, why is that? Well, over the last 10 years, the economy has been very strong. What do people do when they have more disposable income, more money? They go on more trips, AKA go to Vegas, spend more money at Vegas, the town thrives. However, in 2008, 2009, there was no market harder hit. Houses in Las Vegas were going for dimes on the dollar because people stopped going or if they had to go, they spent less money. That is an example of a true ride or die town. People make boatloads of money there. I just don't invest it because I don't know how to do it. I know how to exit properly and enter properly in those markets. So I just don't do that. But that is the basic economy of Las Vegas and one of the reasons I don't invest there but you can make a lot of money there if you know what you're doing. 
feel free to ask me any other questions, guys. But like I said, I focus in the towns where things cash flow for high leverage starting off, which eliminates a lot of things. I love smaller college towns, 50, 80, 100,000 people. Strong healthcare, guys. Those are my two big things I look at. You want to be near good transportation, thoroughfares if you're in a suburb so they can get to the city and commute to work if there isn't a lot of employers in your town. Those are some of the metrics, guys, I look for. If you have any questions, hit me up. Thanks.